Hi everyone, this lesson is on the condition known as blepharitis or eyelid inflammation. In this lesson we're going to talk about what causes this condition, we'll talk about some of the signs and symptoms, how it's diagnosed, and how it's treated. So blepharitis, if we were to actually break down the word blepharitis, the prefix blepher refers to the eyelid and the suffix itis refers to inflammation. So this is a condition involving inflammation of the eyelid. More specifically though, the term blepharitis is used to describe a group of inflammatory diseases involving one or both eyelids. And we're gonna talk about different types of blepharitis and some of the causes of blepharitis in the next upcoming slides. Now, blepharitis can be a relatively common condition. We're going to see it more commonly in older patients and especially the type known as seborrheic blepharitis. And some epidemiological data suggests that approximately 5% or more of the general population may be affected by blepharitis at any given time. Now, blepharitis is associated with a wide variety of systemic conditions. So if you have these conditions, you're more likely to suffer from blepharitis. Some of these include rosacea, contact or allergic dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis, staphylococcal dermatitis, dry eye syndromes like Sjogren's syndrome, other eye conditions like having conjunctivitis, keratitis, and having a chalazion are all associated with having blepharitis as well. Herpes simplex virus infections that cause herpes simplex dermatitis. Varicella zoster virus infections that cause varicella zoster dermatitis. Having molluscum contagiosum, which is a viral infection as well. Having ectoparasitic infections, including demodex infections. Demodex are these microscopic hair follicle mites, so they can actually get in and around eyelashes and other hair follicles and cause inflammation and an infection in the eyelid. And then having phthiriasis palpebrarum can also be another cause of having blepharitis as well. Being exposed to smoke, chemical fumes and smog or pollution and other chemical irritants as well can all lead to blepharitis. So those are the associated conditions and other associated causes. There are other risk factors that can increase your likelihood of getting blepharitis and these include wearing contact lenses, having diabetes and taking certain medications. And blepharitis can be also broken down into different types as we mentioned earlier on in this lesson. One is going to be called anterior blepharitis and the other one is posterior blepharitis. Each one is going to depend on where the inflammation is occurring. With regards to anterior blepharitis, the skin on the eye and eyelid is affected, eyelashes are affected, and eyelash follicles are affected. So this is going to be the one that we're often going to see clinically. The other one is posterior blepharitis. This involves the meibomian glands and the tarsal plate along with the blepharoconjunctival junction. So the ones that are going to affect mostly the eyelashes and around the eyelashes and some of the skin around the eyelid is going to be anterior blepharitis and some of the other ones where we can see it on in and around some of the glands of the eyelid are going to be posterior blepharitis. Now anterior blepharitis is going to be also subsequently broken down into staphylococcal blepharitis and seborrheic blepharitis. So staphylococcal blepharitis is going to involve a staphylococcal infection. And seborrheic blepharitis is the variant that is more commonly found in elderly patients, as I mentioned earlier on in this lesson, and is associated with seborrheic dermatitis. Now let's talk about the pathophysiology behind why blepharitis occurs. As I mentioned before, there are many different associated factors with regards to getting blepharitis. Some of these again include having some medical condition like rosacea or having seborrheic dermatitis or having some ectoparasitic infection with, for instance, demodex mites. So all of these can increase likelihood of having some issue in the barrier of the eyelid. So there can be some infection that can occur in the eyelid due to some predisposing factor we talked about before. So there may be some microbial infection, for instance with a bacteria, perhaps with staphylococcus bacteria, which can cause the staphylococcal variant, or there could be an infection or an increased amount of ectoparasites like demodex that can cause an infection. Whatever that microbial infection might be, we can see microbial invasion into the tissue. What can then happen is that there can be an immune response to that microbial invasion, and there can be immune-mediated responses and immune mediated damage to the eyelid. We can then see some microbial byproducts. For instance, if it's bacteria, we can see bacterial toxins being released into the area causing inflammation. And we can also have waste products that can increase inflammation in the eyelid from both the microbes and also from the immune cells as part of the immune response. 
all of this can lead to inflammation, swelling, and redness of the eyelid and other signs and symptoms which we're going to talk about in the next slide. So the clinical features of blepharitis include the following. Eye irritation. So we can imagine if you have a red swollen eyelid, there's going to be some eye irritation from that. There can also be eyelid flaking. So if you were to actually look at the eyelashes, there can be these flakes that are around the eyelid. So you can see the scaling and flaking. Here's an image of what it might look like if you have herpes simplex virus causing the blepharitis. There can be eyelash changes as well. So they can either change direction or they can be bent or there can be less of them. We can see red and swollen eyelids, as I mentioned before. And there can be mild pain as well. Since there is inflammation, there can be pain. We can also have issues with burning eyes, eye watering, red eyes, so the eyes can become red themselves, and there can be a sensation of having a foreign body in the eye, so if there's a feeling of grit or if something feels like there's something in the eye, that can be something we can see with blepharitis as well. Some other features include photophobia, so photophobia is going to be sensitivity to light, there can be decreased and blurry vision. Patients with blepharitis can often be bothered by spices and alcohol and certain significant temperature changes, either hot or cold. So their eyes can be very sensitive to certain environmental triggers. And because there are so many associated conditions that can occur with blepharitis, we may see some other signs and symptoms. And some of them that I'll just briefly mention here include if the patient has seborrheic dermatitis that's causing blepharitis, they can have scalp flaking or any flaking in and around beards or other hair follicles on the face or the head. If they have rosacea, they can have rhinophyma, which is an enlargement of the nose. They can have papules and pustules on the face as well. And then blepharitis can lead to certain complications, and these can include conjunctivitis and keratitis and something called eyelid positional disease. Now let's talk about how clinicians diagnose and treat blepharitis. So the diagnosis is often going to be clinical diagnosis. This can be commonly seen in elderly patients in the hospital. We can see patients with a red and swollen eyelid and blepharitis can often be the cause. In some cases, testing for tear insufficiency or nasal lacrimal drainage issues may be undertaken, but oftentimes it's only going to be a clinical diagnosis. And then treatment is going to involve what we call eyelid margin hygiene. And it's going to be a prolonged course of treatment. So what is performed in eyelid margin hygiene? So what will be performed by the patient, and the clinician will teach the patient to do this, they will get the patient to have warm water compress. So there can be some use of gauze or perhaps a Q-tip or a clean cloth. They can compress their eyelids repeatedly with gentle mechanical cleansing. So if there's any flakes or any other debris around the eyelashes, it can be important to remove that debris. What can often be mixed with this warm water to improve cleansing is a few drops of baby shampoo. So a little bit of baby shampoo with the warm water to actually help with the cleansing. It's important to use clean water, so having boiled and distilled water as opposed to just using tap water. And it's also important to not rigorously clean the area, just a gentle mechanical cleansing and not having the water too hot. Just a warm water with a little bit of baby shampoo can help. And after cleansing, antibiotic ointment may be used. And again, this is going to be a prolonged and repetitive process where a patient's going to have a little bit of warm water with a little bit of baby shampoo, mild gentle rubbing of the eyelids, just some gentle cleansing, and again using clean water and not too hot of water. In some cases, antibiotic corticosteroid solutions and drops may be used to treat conjunctivitis if there is conjunctivitis occurring as well. And if the eyelid margin hygiene isn't working, you've tried it for long periods of time and there's still issues with significant blepharitis, this is refractory, it's refractory blepharitis. And refractory blepharitis may require oral antibiotics to help with treatment as well. Please check out my lesson on cataracts and on conjunctivitis. And if you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.